Nicola Sturgeon is closer to resigning as her husband lies to the Alex Salmon inquiry again and the European Union caused more trouble in Northern Ireland. Hello everyone and welcome to the second programme of the day. There are some updates from Scotland and the SNP scandal and also we have something from the European Union when it comes to the Irish border and specifically the invisible border between Northern Ireland and the rest of the United Kingdom. But first let's go to The Sun who have been reporting on Peter Morell's uh, hearing. Um, Peter Morell is uh, has got a top job in the SNP but he also happens to be Nicola Sturgeon's husband. Uh, to give you a quick overview, uh, you know that there's this Alex Salmon inquiry going on, um, the former First Minister of Scotland, um, because of his harassment allegations. Now, the problem is he's going down and he wants to take Nicola Sturgeon down with him. They used to be best friends, but okay, considering that uh, apparently he says that Nicola Sturgeon has lied to the Scottish Parliament and her husband has lied to the committee as well because they had meetings and uh, exchanged phone calls and everything, specifically tw in 2018 when he went to Sturgeon's house to have a meeting and Peter Morell was there. Uh, but he claimed that he wasn't there. And now the flip-flopping continues because he was uh, speaking to uh, the committee yesterday again for the second time. And uh, there were some issues there. Firstly, the interim leader of the Labour Party uh, was asking him if uh, there was someone in the room with him and he said no uh, i'm going to show you the clip in a second but also the former leader of the, the scottish conservatives um who also has been quite um, robust in these uh, hearings also questioned him on him potentially lying to the committee let's go to the clip and then come back well, is there anybody in the room with you because you keep looking off to the left off to the left yeah, is there anybody in the room with you just now? No. Do okay, you want me to move the camera around and prove it? Yeah. <laughs> no, no, I just wondered. A conspiracy you're uh, suggesting? No, not at all. No, yeah. <laughs> I've absolutely no idea what that was about. Um, she was, she was, you know, quite concerned about the fact that, considering it's because uh, the the SNP government have uh, spent a wasted a lot of taxpayers' money. We're going to talk about this as well, and lawyers who have uh, decided to prepare all these uh, top officials for the hearing, who somehow after the preparation, they all somehow lost all their memory. Uh, so they, you know, of course she's worried that you know someone's there giving him signals and uh, notes and stuff. Uh, so <laughs> that was a nonsensical part of the inquiry, but uh, continues because this is where the question about him lying comes up. You told me in response to my question, and giving evidence to me under oath, that you were not at home during the meeting. And when you told me you were not really aware that Mr. Salmon was coming to the house, you were giving us false information, having sworn an oath to tell the truth. No, because I, I, I wasn't aware that, that you know the meeting was for a purpose. I just thought he was popping in for a chat about you know any any matter. So what I'm quoting from page twelve. So that's the thing. First, he told them, he told Parliament that he wasn't even there. Then he says now that oh, actually I was there, but. I, you know, I just said hi to Alex, you know, I, I wasn't in a meeting, you know, he just came for a chat and, but yeah, I remember now, I was there, I was there, I, ca I came towards the end and it, <laughs> it continues. Of the official report, when I asked you, I said to you, you were not in the house at the time and you said, I was not at home during either meeting. That was a false statement. Yes or no? Um, I, I refuse to yes, yes or no, Mr. Murrell, it's not a difficult question. Well, was that he, he can't give a straight answer, yes or no. We know the answer. He was there. And uh, so he has lied. This is exactly why, um, following this meeting, Maud Fraser, who was uh, questioning him, has now written, he actually tweeted saying that following uh, Peter Morrell's evidence to the Salmon Inquiry uh, Committee today, I have written to the Lord Advocate asking him to investigate if a crime has been committed under Section 44 of uh, the 1995 Act. We do have his, uh, a copy of his email he sent, uh, he sent to the Lord Advocate saying that you will be aware of the provisions of Section 44 uh, of uh, the Criminal Law uh, of Act 1995, which makes it a criminal offence for, for an individual who has sworn an oath um, then to willfully make a statement 
which he knows to be false or does not believe to be true. As you will also be aware, the Scottish Parliament Committee on Scottish Government Handling of Harassment Complaints requires all witnesses to swear this oath prior to giving evidence. This is escalating massively, so he's now um, potentially lied twice. And uh, considering in the middle of all this, Alex Salmon has now mentioned that he's prepared to uh, do a press conference on live TV to provide more evidence and completely expose Nicola Sturgeon and Peter Morrell, which means this didn't really help Nicola Sturgeon's case. This, combined with uh, Alex Salmon's potential evidence, would be bringing down Sturgeon's leadership. She will be forced to resign if she has lied to the Scottish Parliament. Uh, so her husband is going to be her own downfall. We have been talking about uh, the, the cost to the taxpayer, this saga, every day. We do have the latest from the Times. Uh, they now say that the, the bill for preparing the forgetful civil servants for this inquiry is now, have, have now risen to £76,000. This is just part of it. This is not the whole cost because there's been a lot more to it. The rising cost of the taxpayer was described as simply unacceptable on Monday night uh, because, you know, some of the, so, somehow this money was spent on lawyers who, when they prepared these witnesses, somehow they lost all their memory, as we said. Now, an initial bill of £54,378 was revealed last month, although this was only... Uh, correct up to November the, the 3rd, the date of, um, a freedom of information request was submitted. Now, this has completely escalated the whole situation. There's, there's bigger costs that we have they've been talking about this uh, to the taxpayer. Now, five civil servants have appeared at the committee. These are the people who were prepared uh, within uh, the November to January time frame. Uh, that includes uh, Leslie Evans, uh, Nicola Sturgeon's chief Mandarin, and John uh, Somers, who's the First Minister's private secretary. Now, all these guys somehow completely forgot anything that's happened since 2018. They don't know anything. They, just, you know, they don't even know what they had for lunch. This is going to be escalating up to a point where the SNP's leadership team, not just Sturgeon, everybody else, should be worried about their credibility, the upcoming election and everything else. Um, they could still win the election just about because the other two parties, Labour and Tories, are not really fully trusted. But that doesn't mean that the SNP are fully liked in Scotland. Speaking of uh, organisations that are not liked, the European Union. They have been causing some trouble in Northern Ireland. They have created an invisible border between Northern Ireland and the rest of the UK post-Brexit. This is all in the name of to make sure that there is, a, there is no border between the Republic of Ireland and Northern Ireland. So they moved the border from there to the UK. And uh, this hasn't really helped because they, they promise it's, everything's going to be smooth. It's not. It's causing trouble. Uh, people in Northern Ireland have been affected by it. Businesses, individuals, even basic simple del um, deliveries from Amazon are being affected. Now, the UK uh, government have said we need to extend this grace period uh, and you know, t at least two years. European Union have rejected it. Uh, they have said now they, are, they only agree to only a, you know, potentially a three months three to six months extension. They've said we're not going to do this and because we know they're picking their battles uh, with everything else going on with fisheries and everything else and AstraZeneca. Uh, the European Union are playing games as usual. Uh, this is actually not helping. Ahead of a crunch meeting in London on Thursday, EU figures also accused the UK of exploiting an international backlash against Brussels over its aborted move to erect a hard border. So the, uh, um, the European Union is saying that, oh, the UK are only angry about the Northern Ireland situation because we, you know, accidentally said we're going to put up a hard border. That's not why. It's because people in Northern Ireland have been affected by it. And everybody knows this. I'm not really sure. I'm, 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 I know that the European Union know this. Uh, they're just playing political games. Michael Gove has requested this extension. They've said no. And also, uh, the UK government are now talking to the DUP, uh, the leading party in Northern Ireland to completely override the Brexit deal, the withdrawal agreement, because we have to protect the integrity of the Europe, uh, the United Kingdom. Uh, Geoffrey Donaldson, the DUP's Westminster leader, has told the Telegraph that I am disappointed but not surprised. Well, yeah, I mean, this, no one is actually completely surprised that the European Union are playing games, and uh, he has actually said that you know simply extending the grace period doesn't resolve 
any of the difficulties and doesn't fix the underlying uh, problem. The whole thing has to be overridden. The whole thing has to be reviewed. And uh, we can't have a border uh, inside the United Kingdom managed and monitored by the European Union. Why is it even happening? I'm not really sure what that's happening because uh, they promise it's not going to be a situation. They, they promise everything's going to be smooth, but it's not really true. This situation is also going to be up to date uh, on this channel as usual, as you know. So don't forget to subscribe. And finally, in news in your world, let's talk about our new uh, recent uh, segment that we have introduced. Subscribers of this channel send us an email every day about with some positive or happy story news in their life. Uh, Today's news is from Stuart Banks, who actually emailed us uh, with a story that's happened to him over the last few years. So Stuart, back in December 2012, he was unfortunately diagnosed with a terminal brain cancer. And he was actually given, at the time, 9 to 12 months uh, to live. So he lost all hope, he went home, he got rid of uh, all his musical instruments, and even donated his uh, electric piano to a nearby school because he thought this is the end. And uh, but eight years on, Stuart is still with us. And uh, even for Christmas this year, his wife per purchased him some home recording equipment and he's having a great time. Now, he does say that before his diagnosis, he was a compliance auditor working for a railway kind of contract uh, for a company based in Derby. And uh, obviously that he lost that job. He was medically retired at the time and which was kind of unfair for him. But the good news is, and he says, uh, there has been good news. I am now driving again, something I never thought I'd do. My wife and I have been to Myroka uh, um, a few times, even on Atlantic cruise. And yes, so it's absolutely great. He's, it does say that you know it's been humbling to see the kindness lent by complete strangers. And uh, I thank whoever uh, may be watching over me that I have had this precious time with my loving family and wife uh, hope you and Lacey are well too uh, yeah so this is actually this proves the point of uh, never losing hope even in the darkest times uh, you never know things could get better and uh, we've, we've seen a perfect example in the life of Stuart Banks who's still with us and I hope that he's uh, healthy and uh, kind of fully recovered and hopefully he's going to be with us for a longer, longer time. Uh, thanks uh, Stuart for sending this email as I said uh, guys if you want to send a positive, happy story, anything that's been happened recently or ever in your life, uh, send it to us. This segment is just here to keep you guys uh, uh, slightly more positive during these dark times of lockdown and everything else happening from China to Joe Biden. Uh, thanks again for watching. Do not forget, if you want to support the channel, you can become a member of the channel to actually uh, gain a lot of perks and benefits um, that will actually help you also to get something in back in return. Uh, we have our week, uh, weekly video calls on Wednesdays, which, which we tomorrow, tomorrow, I think it's all sold out, um, but we do it every Wednesday and also weekly Q and A's on Mondays. Uh, and we are gonna bring back the podcast uh, with Lacey. Um, and don't forget, we are going to be doing uh, the regular Saturday live streams at 8 p.m. now. Uh, so for those of you who missed last Saturday, the video is actually, the recorded version is on the channel, but make sure to actually tune in at 8 p.m. if you don't wanna miss out on all the good things that happened during the live stream. Thanks again for watching. I'm Maya TC, and I'll see you guys in the next video.